Chris Lado. Welcome to Lado Files. Welcome to the channel, guys. Today's video is a recut of a video I made last fall about Salvatore Pais. He has three patents. You can find them easily on Google Patents. Salvatore Cesar Pais is an American aerospace engineer and inventor. He currently works for the United States Space Force. He formerly worked at the Naval Air Station Patutent River. His patent applications on behalf of his employers have attracted international attention for their potential military and energy producing applications, but also there's some doubts about their feasibility and they still have yet to be proven in the real world. I go through his three patents here, hope you enjoy it. If you do like this content, smash that like button, subscribe for future content, and then you can support the channel on patreon.com forward slash Chris Lado. Thanks for being here. Now on to the video. Salvatore Cesar Pais, or Pais is how you would say it. That, that means a uh, nation in Spanish. Um, awesome stuff just came out. I just found out about this uh, recently, but he had three main patents. Okay, so Salvatore Pais, you can just Google patents. Google patents is an amazing uh, program. Uh, you can check. He has uh, these three patents, okay, or in his, his name, all related to the U.S. Navy, all very, very interesting, okay? Uh, I'll just go through them just very, very quickly. But basically, the idea is, it looks like this is a back-engineered of Bob Lazar's. All the things he said is is what I got from. When I saw this, when I read through all these uh, patents and really analyzed them, I was like, and you guys still don't believe Bob Lazar. I don't know. This looks pretty similar uh, to what he was saying. Okay, so basically, we'll just go through the three. They're, they're related, but they basically end up in the Pais effect. Okay, the Pais effect, which hasn't been proven yet according to the navy okay the first one is craft using an inertial mass reduction device okay a craft using an inertial mass reduction device comprises of an inner resonant cavity wall an outer resonant cavity wall and microwave emitters the electrically charged outer resonant cavity wall and the electrically insulated inner resonant cavity wall form a resonant cavity the microwave emitters create high frequency electromagnetic waves throughout the resonant cavity, causing the resonant cavity to vibrate in an accelerated mode and create a local polarized vacuum outside the outer resonant cavity wall. Questions? So this is basically the general idea for, for this first patent, okay, and kind of the idea for the whole uh, the whole craft, okay? So basically you have an outer wall here, okay, made of a material that can uh, guide high energy magnetic wave or high energy waves, so some sort of high energy electromagnetic radiation uh, at a certain frequency, okay, and it will vibrate super fast. And, and that's basically what, what he's talking about is out here. You just hit it with high intensity electromagnetic radiation, okay, from a high energy wave generator. <laughs> high energy gravity wave generator would be the best. That's, that's the next patent. Okay, and so that induces this crazy kind of electromagnetic field out here, and I think you can actually spin that. I think you can spin that electrically, okay? You electrically spin that outer field. In the middle here is an inert gas. He said it has to be in a noble gas. So inert gases, those are the ones on the far right of the periodic table. Uh, they don't interact with anything. They're, they're inert. They're the noble gases because they're, uh, they're too stuck up to like hang out with all the, other, all the other chemicals out there, okay? So in here is this inert gas, whatever that does, if it does some sort of weird vibrational stuff, okay? And so on the inside then, these are acoustic. So then he uses or he proposes here to use some sort of intense acoustical wave. So allow another loud wave essentially to vibrate the inner wall. Okay, so it vibrates the inner wall. So what you do is you get two vibrating uh, electromagnetic fields, okay? High intensity fields and they uh, he spins one one direction, okay? And then uses digitals to spin one the other direction, okay? When you have those two, one spinning field like this and one spinning field, they're going opposite directions. What he's saying is the field that is generated, okay, that waves that are possibly generated in here interact with each other. They enter the quantum plasma state. Okay, so right outside the craft, you access into this quantum plasma, which we, we haven't actually understood yet. It's like another level of uh, matter is what I'm basically understanding. And if you can access this state now and those things are spinning, you can get to zero and uh, zero mass so this thing will weigh effectively nothing it goes to zero weight uh, okay questions <laughs> that's the first one 
Uh, let's go to the, uh, that, we'll go quickly through the other ones just in case. This one's much faster. Okay, this this one is uh, basically room temperature superconduction. Okay, uh, it sounds like for whatever reason, this is necessary for the, the craft it, it, itself to actually work. Okay, and so this one, this is just his second. If you look now, this is how he, he says we can get to superconduction, room temperature superconducting is you have a metallic coating on the outside. Okay, I don't know how this is put onto an insulator core. Okay, so the metal's on the outside, insulator's on the inside, and now you hit it with a pulsed current, a certain pulse current, and somehow this makes it superconducting. Okay, this is different from normal wires. Okay, our normal wire is, you know, the metals in, in, inside, and this conducts your, uh, your electrons. Okay, a metal, metals just have free-floating electrons on the outside, so they can fly around. That's why they're conductive. Now those electrons can flow along it. Okay, so we put the metal on the inside and then put the insulator on the outside. Okay, according to this patent now, uh, if you reverse it and now you hit it with a pulse elect uh, electrical charge, now you can get superconducted. Okay, which would be pretty helpful, I think. Uh, that means no loss in our electrical systems. Uh, okay, and then the final third one, this is the high frequency gravitational wave generator. Gravitational wave generator, right? Just finally... We, we actually saw these or detect them for the first time 2017. It went to a, uh, they got a, a Nobel Prize in physics for finding these. Okay, but this is the abstract. The Navy, I believe, paid $500,000, which is nothing really in this, in the field of weapons uh, research, essentially. Uh, most of that just for salaries uh, on this, I think. Can we do a high frequency gravitational wave? generator okay so here it is including a gas filled shell with an outer shell surface microwave emitters sound generators like i mentioned and acoustic vibration resonant gas filled cavity so basically you have the microwave emitters okay that's going to hit that that's going to create that uh, that field on the outside of the craft and then you have these sound generators which are going to use acoustics which is strange to me but acoustics to actually vibrate uh, the gas filled cavity. So maybe that's how they do it. They can use acoustics to vibrate the, the gas. And maybe that's what he's talking about. Uh, but either way to, to create that second electromagnetic field. And now I believe if we can spin one of those and then spin the other, uh, then you can get to a state where it's zero mass. And that could be why we see symmetrical effects, right? Why is the, why is it saucer shaped? Okay. Maybe it has to spin so fast, or maybe the craft itself actually has to spin for some reason, uh, or maybe it just, you need that symmetry, um, when you're spinning these electromagnetic fields to get your best effects or you get your maximum uh, propulsion, etc. Okay, and then just find up, finish it here. The acoustic vibration, resonant gas filled cavities each have a cavity surface that can be electrically charged and vibrated by acoustic energy from the sound generator such that a second magnetic field is generated, electromagnetic field. The two acoustic vibration, resonant gas filled cavities are able to counter spin relative to each other. To provide stability and propagating gravitational field fluctuations are generated when the second electromagnetic field propagates through the first electromagnetic field. So this happened. This was in 2017. Uh, what I understand is they found as a result of this that they, they could not prove the Pais effect. The Pais effect would be, I guess, making this thing weigh nothing. <laughs> okay? It would weigh nothing. And if something weighs nothing... Now what they said is you can hit it with another pulse, okay, using that same system. You just change the way that thing spins. And now since it weighs nothing, you can just be like, whoosh, light speed, boom, it goes light speed. If it weighs nothing, really it doesn't take much force to move it. Salvatore Pais, what an interesting man. He seems torn. You know, he's a patriot, but also morally obliged to do what's right. He was recently on the Theories of Everything show with Kurt Jaimungal and provide a lot more data there. What do you guys think of Salvatore Pais? What do you think of these patents? Do you think the Pais effect will ever be proven true in the real world? Could show some huge ramifications for a anti-gravity capable craft. I mean, imagine if that could be in our near future. Thanks again for being here, everybody. Smash that like button if you did like this content. Subscribe to get notification of future videos and then support the channel on patreon.com forward slash Chris Lado. If you want to get your hands dirty, get UAP Society merch. You can find that in the description or join us on our website or on our Discord. A lot of places, a lot of action going on. Thanks for being here. Have a great week. Peace.